Hey everyone. So my last home lab video did pretty well and there was a lot of people that actually watched it. So maybe people are interested in what, what my dull English voice comes up with. Um, so just to recap what that first video was about was my home lab in that uh, I went and invested quite a bit of, uh, of, of, of money into building some sort of short form fact, small form factor type lab. And just to give you a bit of perspective, this is what my rack looks like or my Ikea furniture looks like. We have five of these, uh, they're Dell Optiplex, are they 7060s I believe? They're running i5, 8500s, 32 gig of RAM, NVMe drive and SSD in, in one of them and, and maybe not even the SS, maybe not the NVMe in the in the vSphere host. But basically I've got five that are running Kubernetes and five dedicated to vSphere. On top of that, you see two mini PCs, terrible um, CPU, but I'm, I'm just using it so that I've got access to Microsoft Hyper-V and Proxmox during these hu hypervisor hunger games time. Then the shelf above, we've got a a ready NAS, a Netgear ready NAS that's 10 plus years old that is there for just purely for backups. It's presented, it can present iSCSI, it can present uh, NFS, and then that bigger one um, is, is there for data store into the vSphere environment. I could also use an NFS provisioner into, into the Kubernetes cluster. I'm actually using Ceph on those NVMEs that I have in that, that cluster. It will also maybe serve as a bit of a NAS as well. So that's the, the lay of the land very quickly. The first video went into a bit more detail about what that looks like. Okay, so in terms of services and plan, um, and I'm gonna show each of these. So we have the five bare metal vSphere hosts. My plan here is I want to be able to spin up, quickly spin up different variants of Kubernetes clusters. I'm using three here, but ultimately they could be any. Um, I also want to do some Linux distribution hopping and, and some stuff around that. But you'll see here that I'd like a, a, a Talus cluster. I'd like to also play around with Rancher and get a K3S cluster up and running. OpenShift, I'm seeing a lot more OpenShift out there. And then equally, we're still seeing a lot of databases and, and virtual machine workloads out there. So building out a MongoDB replica set, a Microsoft SQL Server, a Postgres Server, and then some Veeam stuff that will allow me to back up that stuff into that Netgear 312 and into something called a hardened repo, which is a, a local immutable copy. Offload that then to an Azure Blob, Amazon S3, Google Bucket. They're all added to that, that server. Um, you can see it down the bottom. I also have that Hyper-V and Proxmox. Really, they're not doing anything. There's no workloads on them today, but maybe in the future, there's we're going to take a, a three-tier app and we're going to we're going to use Veeam to move it around um, all of these different different platforms. And then you've got the Netgear ReadyNAS 716 that I've just updated to six times one terabyte SSD in a RAID 5, so just shy of five terabytes usable. I also have a Pi at the moment that I'm playing around with trying to get Talos on that and Postgres and Veeam Kasten for Kubernetes as well. Then in the Talos cluster, five nodes again, those Dell up to Plexes. The plan is, and I'll show you where we are with this, is that I have Argo CD running that is going to be the, the manager of applications. And I have some ideas on what I need to run. Currently, I have Rook in there. I have Argo running. And that's about it. Uh, so I have Rook, I have the CSI for um, Rook Ceph. And I think that's probably it. I'll show you what that looks like. But you can see all the logos down the bottom. I have, I have some pretty cool plans to, to do some other stuff in there. Um, I also don't have Veeam Kasten deployed yet. Bad of me, considering I work at Veeam. Um, so that's like a very short, under five minute recap on that. The... Talus cluster for the five nodes. I'm actually using Omni. And Omni is a uh, SaaS management plane that allows me to add those machines. So here you can see Talus. Well, Talus P1 is that the Raspberry Pi. You can then tag that. And basically you install it, pixie boot it into the image and they, it appears here. Um, so then I can use that to then go and create a cluster. 
So I've created a Talus Metal cluster. It's called Omni Talus Metal. It has five nodes. Three of those are control planes, but still schedulable. And then two are worker nodes. And you can start to jump into that cluster to, uh, to see what's going on. So you can see the CPU that is used. The, in fact, yeah, that's the... And then uh, where else can we go? We can go here and we can look at the nodes. We can look at all the different pods that we have running. We can look at config patches. So this is how we can update some of the stuff um, and some of other other stuff in here as well. But yeah, pretty cool. So we download the cube config. You need kubectl and you need OIDC to authenticate. In fact, let's just see. Yeah, so I've already done that process, but basically you have to authenticate into that up the stack or omni omni.sideralabs.io with your account and then that will give you access into into this and that, that's basically if i do a kubectl get namespace you'll see we don't have a, a terrible amount in there you can see that i'm using cilium as my cni i'm using rookseph as my storage on the, over those mbme and i've got argo cd running so quickly if i just jump over there this is what i've got i've got the Rook Ceph operator deployed using Argo CD. And then I've created a Rook Ceph cluster with those disks. And I've also deployed sealed secrets. I'm playing around with something as well as the CSI snapshot controller, because that will become apparent later on. Moving over to the virtual machine world. If we just go to home, in fact, let's zoom in a bit so that you can see it. Let's get rid of that. So five node, it's using vSphere 8. Um, and it's using that Netgear as my as my storage. You can see how much resources I have. You can see how many how few virtual machines I have running and how many hosts. If I go and look at that inventory, and we look at virtual machines, I've got a placeholder for my Red Hat OpenShift cluster. I've got a few Veeam servers, the Harden Linux repository. Please don't deploy the Harden Linux repository uh inside of your virtual machine environment that you're going to protect in fact don't just unless you're playing with it in a home lab setting then don't deploy it it's not very immutable at this point because i can right click and i can turn that off and and uh delete it from disk and now we don't have a very immutable backup but i wanted to play around with it at v1 which is our observability tool across our environment and not over our vbr um instance we have Two VBR servers. VBR management is my live production this 12.3 in terms of version. And then here I have a, a tech preview of uh, the VBR coming to, to a Linux distribution near you. I have a DevOps management tool. If you saw on the original, this is running Docker. And I'm gonna show just one of the services. It's running Rancher. It's running um, a dashboard called Heimdall. And I'll show you what that looks like. The rest are here, so Pac-Man MongoDB is an enterprise MongoDB. I just used it as a demo. If you've not seen my Pac-Man demo on Kubernetes, I basically took that, ran it on a, I ran the MongoDB aspect outside of Kubernetes because we're seeing a lot more or a lot of virtual machine based databases being used by applications within Kubernetes. Pi-hole, Hopefully everyone knows what pie hole is. I have some plans around basically using that as my um, as my gateway for all my workloads. I have a Postgres instance. I have a SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server. I have my vCenter, which is the the federated management for all of my hosts. And then I have some templates there that you can you can see for um, Server Twenty Two. I have a, a de facto WordPress. If you have been in the vSphere space for, for as long as I have, you've definitely got a WordPress instance kicking about. I also have Proxmox. So this is my, my first ever Proxmox host. I haven't got much going on. We have some Veeam proxies that are dynamically deployed. I have Minecraft because again, why not? Um, and I basically migrated that from VMware into Proxmox. Again, another, maybe another video later. And I have a, a very simple web server that is running. Um, does it give me an IP? This is how I don't do anything with 
anything other than vSphere and Kubernetes. Um, so it's definitely running, but what is the... So there's no way to... There is. Uh, 41. Yeah, so basically, this is running a very simple demo web server experiment. Started life as a Proxmox VM. So a future video, I will maybe take this web server on a journey to all of the hypervisors and maybe some cloud ways as well. Um, let us know if that's of, of interest. But yeah, not much going on here. Um, this actually has an NVMe in and an SSD, I believe. Um, so we have a bit of storage that we could play around with. Um, yeah. Um, and then finally, wanted to just wrap up on, okay, how do you remember all of these IP addresses? Well, clearly I didn't with that web server. Um, I'm, there's some physical hardware, obviously, from a, I use Amplify as my, as my mesh. Um, networking so that's the first icon Omni is going to take us back out to to this management console Argo CD is is Argo CD virtual center is going to take us to this one Proxmox is going to take us to this one Netgear has a very old uh, interface but it does the job if I can remember the password let's not worry about that now I have Rancher if we wanted to go and use Rancher to do deploy this is running in uh, on that DevOps management host Portana same place clearly not running <laughs> um, and then each individual the vSphere host you has a web console as well that we can we can go and get to um, and you can especially if your vSphere vCenter server because it's hosted on there we might uh, we might need we might need that um, I use cups on a very small, like a Raspberry Pi in my in my house, um, to share a non-network printer with the family, and I have a managed Dell switch that all of this all of this uh, hobby home lab gets to go into. So I think we're going to end that now. But you can see here, hopefully you can see here, like we've got some we've got some plans, right? In that. Obviously, I'm very data orientated as to what workloads I want to run. EDB have a, a Postgres um, operator as well as Cloud Native PG. I want to because the reason why I chose the bare metal approach is that I want to run Kubevert, and then maybe we can start to see some other workloads there. Um, I want a monitoring stack around Prometheus, Grafana, and Uptime Kuma, MongoDB, you, MySQL, Portana, Schlink is a, I use a lot of, of links, so I'd like to manage those. Big fan of what SurrealDB are doing in the database space, changing what cloud native databases look like. I, I want to get that up and running, maybe in a VM and in Kubernetes. Postgres, de facto, MySQL, Elasticsearch. Some policy guardrails around Kyverno, Cert Manager, Harbor, MinIO as an object storage location. Maybe use that pie hole in here rather than uh, elsewhere and vault. And yeah, that, like we've got we've got some things to do, right? We've got these Kubernetes clusters that I'd like to automate the provisioning of. Maybe there's a dashboard that in the future that I could hit and say, build me this, destroy me that. Um, but yeah, let me know if that was useful. I don't know if if it is. If we see the same numbers, then maybe we uh, we do a bit more around around the home lab journey that we're that we're having